Rudy Dog. Hey. <laughs> what? This morning we picked up the doors. They'll be installed next Monday, which is, I don't know, four or five days away. We had them painted, as I think you know. Uh, the inside are this nice kind of off-white, and the outside is this rich brown color that matches the garage door. So we've got them all set up in the approximate position. Uh, we have uh, white on both sides for the interior door here. Um, it's an exterior door, but kind of an interior location. Um, brown and white for the main service door here. And then for the double door over here, uh, again, brown and white. So things look really nice. We're looking forward to the installation on Monday. What we have to do before then is prep and flash the sills. So as you can see here, this is a strange sill because of that grade board down there. We have a pretty hefty trough. Also the concrete, because it's on a 45 degree angle, is exceptionally thin up here. So we've got some self-leveling polyurethane and we're gonna fill this crack all in with that and hopefully protect it and allow it to dry uh, before we actually flash the surface. I'd like to use a sill pan, but frankly, I, I cannot find one uh, that works. And I don't really want to use a solid metal sill pan just because I don't want the wicking of heat through it. What I'd like to do instead of that is liquid flash. That would really be nice here because of all the different textures and uh, surfaces, but it's too cold for liquid flash, like a, like a zip liquid flash. So I think what I'm gonna do is use zip stretch tape for it. It's thick, somewhat rubbery. I am concerned that it won't stick very well to the brushed concrete and create a, a good water barrier there. Uh, hopefully everything goes well. Uh, we're also going to be using a metal flash um, on the interface between the concrete and the grade board here. We have a Z flashing. I'm gonna do a quick kerf cut about an inch and a half out into the concrete and install that with polyurethane uh, behind it. So Robert's gone through and used an abrasion pad to scuff up the concrete on both sides where we're gonna be attaching our peel and stick flashing. Um, now we've got a concrete blade out and we've marked the area where we're going to use metal flashing along the edge. And the metal flashing is gonna look just a little bit like this, uh, nothing too fancy. Um, and we're gonna be curve cutting in just about a half inch there. This will eventually go all the way along the porch here to make sure that any water will run straight off and not weep under the um, grade board there. We're just doing this little bit now until someone can come and do a larger scale curve cut for us. So Robert has the curve cuts done, and you can kind of see what the uh, flashing detail is gonna look like on the corner. Um, it's nothing super fancy. There's a slight overlap on the bottom here. I didn't do an overlap up here, I should have. But it's gonna be all covered and protected by the uh, door sill, and we'll uh, polyurethane caulk the heck out of it anyway. This uh, curve cut is exposed, but it'll all be filled with polyurethane, and you won't see any of that. Um, the polyurethane is limestone, similar color to this, similar color to the concrete. It should all blend together nicely.
it's not perfect, but it definitely adds some rigidity to this, uh, this transition from the grade board to the concrete. I, I wish we could have done the whole thing, but we'll get to it later. For now, this corner uh, looks really good. Um, the kerf cut was filled back in with polyurethane and uh, the whole thing is kind of stuck together. Put a couple of roofing nails into it to hold it in place, but it's kind of jacked up against the kerf cut. Besides the polyurethane, we'll pack everything together and hold it tight. Uh, we'll be flashing over the top and in corners, so uh, there will be a, a pretty good connection between the zip tape up here and the metal flashing down there. done. Still has to cure, but this little service door is done. Late last night, we were uh, trying to knock this out. After getting this flashing detail in, we started on this flashing detail. Um, needed a new tube of caulk. Um, Robert handed me the caulk and I slammed it into the Milwaukee gun. It wasn't dispensing right. I questioned Robert whether he pierced it. He said, yeah. I'm like, it's not dispensing enough. Tried it a little bit more. Still not dispensing. Got to be a problem. I pulled the tube out and the plunger in the tube was sideways and all the caulk had pushed back into the workings of the Milwaukee gun. And this isn't caulk per se, this is polyurethane adhesive <laughs> or sealant. And uh, polyurethane is awful. Can really only be cleaned with acetone. So seeing all this polyurethane um, dripping into the motor area of the gun, uh, we both freaked out, realized we didn't have acetone. Robert took off to the general store in our little village. They had a gallon, brought it home, and we sat in the camper over a bowl of acetone for the next hour and a half with a bunch of towels and Q-tips cleaning out that entire gun. The good news is that Milwaukee makes a gun that can completely come apart for cleaning and we were able to pretty much get every bit of caulk off of it. I mean, it was even inside on, on the actual motor drive, um, and we were able to take the whole thing apart. And while we were there, we gave it a nice greasing as well, so it, it's nice and protected from the elements. I mean, just, I'm, I'm so amazed that this gun is built to the quality that it is. Um, I thought we lost it. I thought this gun was toast, and uh, we were gonna be out hundreds of dollars as a result. But no, I mean, it, I mean, it really cleaned up nicely. Of course, try uh, having an open bowl of acetone in a small camper at nighttime. No, I don't advise it. But, oh my god, I've never had a tube of caulk do that. It just turned sideways and all the caulk came out the back. Absolute disaster. Um, I needed a little bit, so I grabbed this manual drive just to see if I could squeeze a little out and you can see what it did to the manual. Very little came out the tip, half the tube came out the back. But it was enough for me to get that last piece of flashing in, which was really all I needed that particular tube for. I was able to seal it up for the most part. Um, this had a huge gap, as you can see, between the grade board and this grade board. 
So I wanted to fill that in with polyurethane. Couldn't do that. So I grabbed a can of expanding foam, which was also a disaster. Since the can was freezing cold, it would not dispense. And uh, I spent about 10 minutes working as much out as I could just to fill this little area. Man, what a, what a comedy of errors trying to get this one little flashing in. Um, and of course it was pitch black by that time. So we had spotlights out here just in that little work area, but we got it done. And this morning uh, with a nice clean caulk on, I used the self leveling to fill in this gap here. And uh, it looks fine. Um, hopefully it'll harden up by Sunday, which is two days away, it's Friday. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to put a uh, zip flashing tape, stretch tape um, over the whole thing and, and up the sides and around the corners and get that all nice and flashed. And hope it, hopefully that tape sticks well enough to the concrete. The snow finally stopped yesterday afternoon and today warmed up a little bit. So everything is sliding around and it's not gonna be too long until the entirety of this roof empties onto the uncovered porch here. Uh, so we're racing against time to get the flashing in for the door sill. The uh, doors will be installed tomorrow and uh, we've held off on the flashing, um, partly just due to procrastination. Um, sometimes new areas where I'm not completely confident um, get the back burner just because there's some unease there. But we can't procrastinate any longer on this. Because of the temperature and the timing, we're using the zip stretch tape. It's got a nice rubbery surface, even though we're not fully stretching it. I feel like it's a, a fairly rugged flash um, and it seems to be adhering really well. So we put it in line with the uh, wall on the outside and we're going about an extra inch on the inside. I should have gotten nine inch flash, but we have six, so we overlapped it in the center. The area that is filled in with the uh, polyurethane uh, sealant is uh, still wet and squishy. Uh, it'll dry eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, the uh, flash has enough of an overlap that uh, things are things are pretty good. We'll keep it protected today, and that involves basically uh, trying to block this inevitable snow avalanche that's going to come off this roof. What we did, as I mentioned, we put the first layer of six inch uh, along the outside, put another layer of six inch on the inside, and then wrapped it around the, that edge there. So it gives us a, a nice seal all the way in. So we're both quite happy with this. This turned out pretty well. Uh, just like before, uh, we flashed uh, two layers, one in front, one in back, and then wrapped around the jam here, uh, just trying to trim that off. It all stuck pretty nicely to the concrete. The edge is really close here to the, um, to the polyurethane, and that should be fine. Seems to have sealed up very nicely around the uh, metal flashing, and I'm pretty pleased. Um, it goes all the way around to the other side and uh, creates a pretty, pretty nice uh, barrier. This one I did without Robert's help and uh, I did trap some air bubbles in it. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Frankly, it'll all be covered with a sill plate and no one will ever know. But it is kind of a nice reference for the future um, when doing it, you know, another set of hands is, is nice when you're putting two layers of this. Um, airtight stuff on top of each other, it sticks to itself so tenaciously. Rude dog. What? What are you doing? So one of the other things that we needed to do uh, in prep for the doors is uh, 
run the cables, not through the doorway. So I got a piece of four inch PVC, three inch PVC, uh, cut an angle on it, kind of making a little umbrella. Uh, put it in a window opening so it won't impact the wall at all long term and uh, taped it up and then we're running all of our cables to uh, the electrical box and then we'll run our uh, water line to the camper.